Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Tom Kelly. This is Clean Cut Audio. And in this week's Two Minute Tuesday, I'm going to so briefly teach you how I use Isotope RX sound and audio restoration software as plugins in my DAW to make it very user friendly, quick, and efficient. All right, let's do it. Isotope RX is an audio restoration plugin and standalone audio suite that is extremely powerful and very unfortunately necessary in the world of podcasting. As a podcast producer, I'm doing upwards of 20 shows a week and super unfortunately, most of these audio like signals that I get from people are not fantastic. No matter what you do, People are just a little lazy with their recording sometimes, and it requires a little bit of cleaning up. Now, I am not an RX expert. I don't even touch the standalone mode, and here's my reason why. The standalone mode is a much more powerful audio restoration process, and it requires a little bit of extra time, but here's my rationality for not using it. If the audio is so bad that I need to use standalone mode for that extra power... I'm not going to do that episode. It's as simple as that. Audio should be recorded great at the source, not repaired later. I understand that we're not all working under perfect conditions. I will use RX as a plugin, but if you want me to like, if it's so bad, I have to use standalone mode. It's just like, it's not an episode that's going to go out with me. It's pretty brutal, but like, I don't have time for that. You know, I, I want my clients to be at a higher standard. I want them to hold themselves in their show at a higher standard and respect their audience by giving them a recording that sounds great. Now, again, I'm not the RX expert. I use this in a very light fashion, but it's very effective. Let me show you how. In my Pro Tools session here, I have my track up top and my co-host on the bottom. Now, he deals with a little bit more noise than I do. His room isn't acoustically treated. He's got some stuff on the wall, but it's not perfect. So I use three, four RX plugins on this entire signal, three on his track. Now, the first thing is he has a little bit of this like ground loop going on. So I have the spectral denoise. Now, I'm going to bypass his noise reduction plugins, leave all the compression and the dynamics on there, and we can listen to how loud the noise floor is. Little bit of a hum, little bit of a buzz in there. So what I do is I sample a part where it's just noise floor, no one's talking, and I'm going to hit learn, and I'm going to hit play so that the RX spectral denoise can take care of the buzzing as best as it can. So it's sampling the noise down here. And when I hit stop, it has learned that noise. And now it will extract that noise from the audio signal. So we can hear that it's no longer there. Now that is for turning the silence into sheer silence, but there's still a little bit of noise that creeps through while he's talking. Well, not huge, but I guess the original part was the Hershey Park. So what I do is then I put on the voice denoise. And I have this up a little bit higher to catch anything that kind of comes in and out while he's talking. The spectral denoise is a very low threshold, barely above what the noise is. And I'm reducing not really that much, 11.8 decibels. So it's not extreme. Because again, if you watch my compression video, you know that things can be more subtle if you do multiple stages of it, multiple light stages rather than one extreme one. So we're taking care of the spectral noise and then we go over to voice denoise and this is hitting, yeah, anything, any of the noise that's happening in between while he's talking and the two of these together make his signal crystal clear. Well, not huge, but I guess the original part was the Hershey Park. Okay. And now the next thing that I do is I use D reverb. I put this at the end of the signal. It probably should be at the beginning I don't really know. I haven't noticed like too much of a difference either before or after. Usually I'm a fan of putting any of the restoration stuff before dynamics or EQ processing. I'm probably going against my own word here and I should change that in the future. But as of right now, this is working pretty okay. So you can hear a little bit of room noise in his signal. So again, we're going to learn his signal. We want to hear the vocals now. 
We're going to hit learn. Trogue's brewery location there. Um, there's a huge venue. There's a huge, well, not huge, but I guess the original part was the Hershey Park. And now it's learned his signal. It's kind of learning the difference between signal and reverb. And then the reduction is super light because he doesn't need a lot. The more you hit, turn that reduction up, the more fake and kind of affected it sounds. We don't want that. So it's 1.4 on the reduction scale. 1.4 what? I'm not really sure. Is that decibels? Strength of processing. Okay. So we've got 1 through 20. We are very minimal. Let's listen to it after. Let's do before and after here. Trogue's brewery location there. Um, there's a huge venue. There's a huge, huge, but I guess the original part was the Hershey Park. And obviously the candy factory. It's probably one of Pennsylvania's weirdest little areas. So it's not cutting every little bit of the room sound, but like any more than that. And it starts sounding a little natural. The ideal thing is to fix it at the source. We are working on getting some Roxol insulation panels on his walls. Right now we don't have them. We've got another cheap option we spent zero dollars on to even get it to that point. But this is like, this is how I use isotope super lightly on my track i have it barely doing anything just to catch any noise that would be there from you know boosting the signal as much as i do in order to get to negative 16 luffs so that's what i have on my vocal tracks if you go down to my mix bus which is separating things out from the master fader where music comes so all the vocals are going to mix bus music is going to master and then they both go out together i have one more voice denoise and this is because you can see a lot of fluttering around on the bottom i have a lot of compression on these tracks and many of them are hardware like emulated plugins which add some kind of analog noise a little bit of just noise in there that's a characteristic of the plugin but i don't want it so i'm taking that noise out very lightly not much reduction it's just catching that little rumble on the bottom there and then from there i run d mouth click now ideally you're not putting tracks like this on a master fader because you don't want it affecting music especially or things that you really don't want it to now i have only my two vocals bust out to a mix bus and then the music goes to the master fader the mix bus goes to the master fader so they're affected separately it's probably not the best practice to put d mouth click on a master on a mix bus but i do it to save time and again i haven't heard any like distinct issues so i run it just one instance of it on the mix bus and we can see here how many clicks it's going to repair. And my favorite part is outputting the clicks only. My co-host, I love him to death. He has the clickiest cheeks I've ever heard. Let's listen to this. I feel good about this. Uh, it's not exactly like a super evergreen thing. We're doing a Hella Megator draft. Get the clicks Next down Mixtape draft. We're going to go 10 songs each. Uh, the Hella Megator. This is the sound of his cheeks. It sounds like... Alien versus Predator or something. Um, this is not something that you could be taking out manually by cutting all these clicks. It's just embedded in the signal. So D mouth click helps a lot with just those cheek noises that people, myself included, tend to make. I love this plugin. It adds quite a bit of latency. So I only run it once I'm bouncing down. But that's how I use Isotope RX. Again, I don't know every aspect of this plugin. I have never opened it in standalone mode. Again, for the reason that I mentioned, if a track is that bad, it should not be published. That is extreme. I understand. I'm pretty unforgiving with audio that's super bad, but my co-host is recording on a very, very budget-friendly setup. He has his microphone on his dresser, t-shirts and sweaters hung all over the wall and stuff behind the microphone. He spent... No money on sound conditioning and his signal is like really good for the tools that he has available to him. There is no excuse to be providing really bad, noisy audio. I mean, there just isn't, you know, turn your air conditioner off, try to soften your walls up somehow. I know that like some things don't work H hanging a moving blanket on the wall isn't really an effective solution but like there's things you can do 
to make your signal better even without a lot of money. RX costs like $400. Think of how much better your signal would sound if you just sound condition your room for $400. Get a bunch of insulation panels on the wall. Then you won't need D-Reverb. Your signal is just better. We should be fixing at the source, not getting a suboptimal recording and then fixing it later. Fixing it in post is... Sometimes you have to do it, but it shouldn't be the goal. So this is how I use RX very minimally. That's how I like it. I use it only as a real-time plugin. I don't take stuff into RX and then fix it and bounce it down and bring it back into Pro Tools. I don't monitor from Pro Tools into standalone. I only do plugins. I only do real-time because my focus is great audio, not fixing bad audio. And I hope it's yours as well. Thank you so much for sticking through with this video. I know it didn't provide a ton of information, but a lot of people think RX is this really difficult software and I'm sure there's a lot to it. I'm sure there's a whole lot that I can't even fathom that it can do, but honestly, that's okay with me. I'm here to get good audio. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel and ring the bell so you don't miss a video. I've got new videos every week with some longer ones mixed in there. People have been emailing me hello at cleancutaudio.com and asking for me to do specific videos for them. I forget who requested this video, but someone emailed me asking, you know, how I use Isotope RX because they're having a hard time figuring it out. So I will make a video specifically for you if a, it's something I'm knowledgeable enough to teach because I don't want to teach something I don't know very well myself. And if it's something related to podcasting, I just, I'd be happy to help in any way that I can. And again, I'm always learning myself from doing these videos. I'm always a student. Even after 10 years, we should all be learning more every single day. Thank you so much, everybody. If you'd like to buy some t-shirts, I have some available cleancutaudio.com slash shop. A few designs available from both men and women, a few different colors, lots of fun stuff in there. Feel free to buy anything. I know Christmas is over, but why not treat yourself? Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you later. Bye.